The Prime Minister of Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan said that the Russian-made Iskander ballistic missile system was completely useless. He also called the missile problematic and useless. The statement was Pashinyan's response to former Armenian President Serge Sarkisyan, who declared that he would use Iskander on the fourth day in Nagorno-Karabakh. Sarkisyan also asked why this system did not damage Azerbaijan's oil and gas facilities. Meanwhile, the Armenian Prime Minister said that the Russian missiles were useless and did not all explode. Let him ask, why didn't the Iskander missile explode? Or why it exploded 10%, for example, said Pashinyan. In response to a journalist's question about whether this was possible, the Armenian Prime Minister said, I don't know. Armenia first announced the acquisition of the Russian-made Iskander tactical missile system in September 2016. In early November 2020, The Drive reported that Armenia used Russian-made Iskander ballistic missiles to attack targets of Azerbaijani troops. Footage was also shared on social media showing what appeared to be the first evidence that Armenia fired an Iskander ballistic missile. The Iskander tactical missile system is designed to strike low-sized targets and enemy locations up to 500 kilometers away, missile launchers, multiple launch rocket systems, long-range artillery, aircraft and helicopters at aerodromes, command posts and central communications. On the other hand, military experts interviewed by TASS revealed that the Iskander system was completely abandoned during the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. The tactical Iskander missile system was not used during the military conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh, experts told TASS, commenting on Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan's claims about launcher inefficiency. The Iskanders were not used during the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict and they did not launch. That is why it is necessary to ask Pashinyan where his fantasies came from, says military expert Viktor Murakovsky. The Iskander tactical missile system was delivered to the Armenian army and the team was trained to operate it. The ballistic missiles were fired directly at the Kapustin Yar proving ground in the Astrakhan region in Russia, the expert said. Everything is 100% tested and there are no complaints, said Murakovsky. The Iskander tactical missile system was not used during the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh in 2020, the Russian Defense Ministry said. According to the objective and reliable data confirmed by the live monitoring and recording system, no missile system of this type was used during the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh, the Russian ministry said. The entire load of the missile ammunition is stored at the depot of the Armenian Armed Forces, the Russian ministry stressed. Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan misunderstood the use of the Iskander missile system in Nagorno-Karabakh, the Russian official explained. Overall, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Armenia Mr. Nikol Pashinyan has been misled and, as a result, he used inaccurate information, the ministry said. In addition, the political crisis in Armenia turned into chaos after thousands of supporters and anti-government Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan alike took to the streets Thursday. The situation grew tense when fighter jets buzzed loudly in the Armenian capital, Yerevan. The military camp opposed Nikol Pashinyan, which put the former Soviet state under threat of a military coup. Pashinyan took to the streets in the capital, leading the action of his supporters shouting at Prime Minister Nikol. Pashinyan said his country was indeed threatened by an attempted military coup after the armed forces demanded his resignation.
This political crisis comes amid the split public reaction to the government's handling of last year's war with Azerbaijan to win the Nagorno-Karabakh region. Hours after the general staff of the Armenian military made shocking calls for his government to step down, Pashinyan gathered about 20,000 supporters in the center of the capital to oppose what he said was an attempt to overthrow him. Not to be outdone, the opposition camp gathered around 10,000 supporters not far from the pro-government camp. They started pitching tents and building barricades outside parliament as they promised to hold demonstrations around the clock. Army Chief of General Staff Onik Gasparian issued a statement criticizing Pashinyan's decision to fire Tehran Kacharian, the Army's first Deputy Chief of General Staff. Gasparian demanded Pashinyan's resignation and said his cabinet must also step down. The Prime Minister and government can no longer make sensible decisions, the military statement said. For a long time, the Armenian armed forces have patiently tolerated attacks by the ruling government aimed at maligning the armed forces, but all have their limits, the statement said. The statement was signed by Gasparian, his deputies and top military personnel who are the general staff of the Armenian armed forces. Meanwhile Pashinyan responded defiantly. I command all generals, officers and soldiers to do your job of protecting the country's borders and territorial integrity, he told a general meeting. The army must obey the people and elected authorities, Pashinyan continued. He sought to downplay the military statement, saying it was an emotional reaction to Kachatrian's dismissal. We call on Nicole Pashinyan not to lead the country into civil war and to avoid bloodshed. Pashinyan has one last chance to escape chaos, prosperous Armenia, the country's largest opposition party, said in a statement. Prosperous Armenia and another opposition party, Bright Armenia, called for an extraordinary parliamentary session, which is controlled by Pashinyan's allies. <laughs>